All right, now I recommend doing these problems just like I've done them on the board, so let's not skip steps, which means we should write down all of these key pieces of information, physically write down V perpendicular from V, and then physically write down Q times V. People tend to skip that, but that's important to actually write down. Let's try this problem. Let's try to do it the same way we did the previous problem. So what's the first thing we're going to have to figure out and write down on the board before we can use this right hand rule? Um, so we know that V is coming out of the board, so V is perpendicular to the board. Right. Um, and so the component of V that's perpendicular to that is just V. That's right. That's good that you saw that. Uh, this is in the plane of the board, and this is perpendicular to the board, so if, if you could use the chalk to represent B, and that makes it clear that coming out of the board is perpendicular to this vector that's in the plane of the board. So the entire B is perpendicular to B. Again, that's going to be the case on most of your exam problems. Okay, excellent. Well, we're still not ready for the right-hand rule. What else do we need to write down now? Um, okay, so now we know that Q times B is perpendicular is um, positive. I mean, is in the direction of, of V perpendicular. So what direction is that? Pointing down. Right. When we multiply the, this by a positive number, its direction doesn't change. OK, well, now we're ready to use the right hand rule. OK, so I point my fingertips in the direction of Q times V. Which is down. Good. Uh -huh. um, and then I turn my palm in the direction of B. Good. Which is, I guess, the way it is now. So it's yeah, funny. away from the board. Good. Uh -huh. um, and then my thumb, I guess, is pointing that way. So that's the direction of the force. Yeah, what direction is that? To the left. So let's write that down before we forget that. As soon as we figure out directions, we need to write that down. Excellent. So QV is pointing down, that's our fingertips. V is pointing out of the page, that's our palm pointing out of the page. Make sure that once you've got V right, you haven't messed up your QV. Our QV is still right, and then our thumb would be pointing to the left. Okay. Good. Let's try another problem. Let's okay. go through that same, the same steps as before. Okay, so we know that V is pointing up, um, and V is going into the board. So. Okay, so then um, V is perpendicular to B. Yeah, V is going into the board, which is perpendicular to something that's in the plane of the board. Good. Uh -huh. So V perpendicular is equal to V. Good. Um, and that means that V perpendicular times Q is coming out of the board. What's the symbol for that? A dot. All right, good. So it's good that you thought about that, and we need to write down, write that down because, well, because we need it. All right, then. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna... Sure. Okay. So then we point our fingertips into the board. In the direction of, uh, let's see. So what direction oh, is sorry, this? Oh, sorry, sorry. We point our fingertips, I guess, I don't know how I do that that way. Out of the board? board? That's right. This is like the tip of the arrow coming towards us. Okay. Um, so we would point our fingers uh, like uh, this. That's right. So yeah, from where you're sitting, that's uh, a little bit uh, uncomfortable, I guess. All right, good. Okay. All right, um, and, and then, then what? And then I point my palm in the direction of B, which it already is. Which is up. Uh -huh. Good. And then my thumb is pointing to the I'm getting all these directions. I guess it's pointing to the left. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. So what direction is the force in? So the direct it's good. This way. Good. So let's see. Um, QV is pointing out of the page. That's our fingertips. Um, our palm should be pointing up. 
And once we get the palm in the right direction, we should double check to make sure we didn't mess up the fingertips, but we've got that right. And then my thumb now is pointing to the left. So we should write that down. And once again, now we've figured out the correct magnetic force. Great. Good. Good. Are we treating this like a source charge or a test charge? It's a test charge. Yeah. What was the clue in the problem that we're treating it as a test charge? We're talking about the force. Yeah, we want the force on it, so we're treating it like a test charge. Once again, we're not even saying what the source of this magnetic field is. We're just assuming there's an external magnetic field from some unspecified source. We're just working with this arrow. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's the method. Now, this is one that people are most likely to get messed up because they're lazy and they don't write down QV, and then they end up pointing their fingers into the page using this X. Um, so you really got to watch out for these negative charges on the exam. There's other, there's other ways to deal with negative charges in right-hand rules, but I think this is the best, so we'll, we'll try to stick with this. Um, if, you, if you always point your fingers in the direction of QV, that will automatically take care of the negative charge. If you're dealing with a positive test charge, QV will be the same direction as V, but if you're dealing with a negative charge, QV will be opposite to V. So, uh, especially in the test, we just don't want to be lazy. We should actually write down QV, and then we'll remember that even though this is pointing into the board, our fingers should be pointing out of the board. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the type of notation I would recommend using on these problems. Notice that from now on, it's going to be useless to just write down the direction of a vector. Why is it going to be useless to just write down the direction of a vector? Because you won't know what vector this stands for. You won't know whether this is V or V perpendicular or D or F. From now on, not only do you have to write down vectors, you always have to label what vector they represent. Otherwise, they're going to get confused. For example, on the exam, you'll probably see questions that involve magnetic fields and electric fields. And then you'll have to say that this is the magnetic force to distinguish it from the electric force and the electric field. So we need to label all our arrows. Oops. Now we're going to do a kind of different type of question. Uh, but we'll try to use uh, similar approaches here. So how would we attack this? Okay. Um, so let's see. We don't know what direction B is in, but we know that V perpendicular is to the right. Um, so I guess we know that B is either pointed up or pointing down. Yeah, that's true. That's good. Um, and we know that, so I guess, let's see, we know that Q times V is um, pointing to the left. Because if you multiply a vector by a negative number, its direction reverses. Yeah. Good. So I would start by just pointing my fingers to the left. Good. And then um, I know that B is either going to be, I'm either going to be like this or like that. Um, and then, so if I go like this, the force is coming out of the board. Right. But if I go like this, it's going into the board. So Good. I know that it's this way. So I know that B has to be pointing down. Good. That's excellent. That's a very good approach. We can just streamline that a little bit. Um, we, um, so that's good. You did this problem a little bit differently than the previous ones, which is fine, but we could do it basically exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, our fingertips here should be pointing to the left. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we know the force, which tells us how our thumb should be pointing. So which way should our thumb be pointing? Out of the board. Yeah. All right, okay. and now which way is my palm pointing? Yeah. Right, so you kind of did it by kind of a process of elimination yeah. or checking all the different cases. But the fact is we don't have to do this any differently than the previous one. It's just in the previous cases, we put our fingertips and our palm in the correct direction, and that told us where the force was. Yeah. Well, in this case, we put our fingertips and our thumb in the correct direction, and then it'll just tell us directly what the, um, what the field is based on where our palm is. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, let's see. Our fingers are pointing to the left, because that's how QV is pointing. Um, and now um, the force is coming out of the board, and that's our thumb. So here's our thumb coming out of the board, and my palm is facing down. So I should write that down. That's going to be B. So again, 
If you know any two of these, you can use the right hand rule to figure out the third. The key thing is, when you're using the right hand rule, don't focus on what the question is, focus on what you're given. For example, in this case, we shouldn't try to get our palm facing in any direction. Instead, we should make sure our fingertips and our thumb are pointing in the right direction, and then our palm will all automatically be pointing in the correct direction. Yeah. Um, so if we put our fingertips to the left and our thumb out of the board, then we don't need to adjust the palm separately. Um, that tells us which way the field is. Okay, good. 